Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC course on introductory point set topology part 2. This is module 6. We are beginning a new chapter back into down the right point set topology. Recall that in part one, we have introduced several topological concepts like compactness, Lindelofness, variability, first countability, second countability, which may all be called as some kind of smallness properties. Then we also have introduced the freshness, which is T1, Hausdorff's which is T2, regularity, normality. These are called somewhat largeness properties. Now the idea is to mix the two of them. Of course, one has to be a bit judicious about it. Judicious mixture of such things is going to produce many, many interesting results which are also useful. Okay, so today we will concentrate upon just one of these things, namely compactness on one part and Hausdorffness on the other side. So we are going to study compact Hausdorff spaces. Okay, we have already seen one such application of this one, namely if you have a bijection, continuous bijection from a compact space to a Hausdorff space, then it is a homeomorphism. Okay, so this is what we have already seen in the first part. A close examination of this theorem tells us that instead of having two different spaces so suppose you have the same set and the same set you may have different topologies okay so that then you can compare them by using the inclusion maps from one to the other if you have a house door space and then if you take another topology which is larger than that, then we know that the inclusion map will be continuous. Right? Any any topology to larger topology, inclusion map is continuous. So it will be a continuous bijection. So you can use this theorem to conclude many things. Namely, if the smaller one is compact and the larger one is Hausdorff then the inclusion map is a homeomorphism, which means that the smaller one is also Hausdorff and the larger one is compact. So this is the way compactness and Hausdorffness, you know, one says uh, there are lots of open sets. The compactness says there are not many open sets in some sense. So these come together very nicely. Okay. So, obviously, when you have compact order spaces, they are going to dominate the scene in point set topology. So, here we start with a very mild uh, conclusion. Start with a half star space and a subspace which is compact. The same thing as saying that the subspace it's both all compact and lost off. So that is a different way of saying it, that's all. So start with the Hausdorff space. Right? Given a compact subset B and a point X not in B, there exists disjoint open sets U and V in X such that X is in U okay, and B is contained inside V. So this disjointness, you know, immediately you must be remembering 
this kind of thing was studied in regularity. Okay. So I am not saying anything is regular here because something is assumed to be a subset is compact, not the whole thing. We will apply that one later on. Right now, a point X outside this compact subset can be separated by open sets, you know, disjoint open sets lying in between. X is inside you, B is inside V. Okay. So, people who have studied regularity, orthogonalness, etc., this will make immediate sense. Kya ho raha hai? So, what I am going to do is just go through the proof directly now. Okay. So, start with a point B, find a disjoint open set UB and VB, pair of disjoint open sets, such that X is in UB and Y is in Sorry, B is in VB. Why this is possible? Because X is housed off. That's all. Now, we have done this one for each B inside VB. Uh, sorry, each B inside B. And B is compact. This V is under V suffix B. They are open subsets. And they contain little B. So, union of all of them will be a cover for B. And B is compact. So that means that I have finitely many V B1, V B2, V B N, and so on, which cover the set B. Okay. Now you see for each V B I, I have a disjoint open set U B I. So I take U as intersection of these finitely many open sets. That is an open subset which will be disjoint from all the VBIs, therefore, disjoint from the union. Okay. The union contains the entire of B, the intersection contains the point X. So we are done. Okay. So this method will be repeated again and again. So just watch out this one again. So what we have done? We have used the compactness of B after using the uh, separation by this Hausdorffness. We are extracting a finite cover. The finite cover allows us to take intersection of certain certain other, not from <laughs> not from the cover itself. For each for each uh, member of the cover, there are other things which are of interest. So there I take intersection. Here I take union. Okay. So we will we will keep playing this game again also. All right. So as a corollary, I told you now, if you take B equal to whole of X, then what is the corollary? The corollary is every compact subset of a Hausdorff space. Sorry, first of all, B itself is taken as a Compact subset of Hausdorff space, it will be closed subset. So, why that is closed? Because B is compact as above. For each point X belonging to the complement, I have an open subset disjoint from B, disjoint from some open subset containing B. So, it will be disjoint from B also. So, if you take union of all these X for each X in the complement of B, that will be an open subset which will be precisely equal to what x minus b. So x minus b is over. Okay, that's an easy corollary. The next thing is what I am more interested in, namely a compact Hausdorff space is normal. What actually we have proved here already means that a compact Hausdorff space is regular. Okay, why? Combining with this corollary, take any closed set inside a compact space, it will be compact. Therefore, I can apply <coughs> this theorem for every point outside B, I will get this one, means it is regular. Okay, now we want to improve on that one. Namely, 
compact host of space is normal. Recall normal means starting with two disjoint closed subsets A and B, I must produce open subsets containing them respectively, say U containing A and V containing B, and U and B must be disjoint. Okay. So what we do? We start applying the proposition. Okay. First, for each point X inside A, obviously it will be not in B, right? So I can get a two disjoint open subsets which I will label with uh, because they depend upon X, UX and VX. So said X is in UX, the whole of B is inside VX. Okay, so I am directly applying the proposition rather than just Hausdorffness here. Okay, so whole B of a container. Now, let ux1, ux2, uxk be a finite subcover of A. Okay, why? Because this A being a closed subset of a compact space, that is also compact. So there will be a finite cover. Again, as I have indicated earlier, now I take G to be the union of these Xi's. That is obviously an open set. But on the other hand, I take HS intersection of Vxi's. Each Vxi contains B. So the intersection contains. Being a finite intersection of open sets is O. OK. Look at this one. Each Vx is disjoint from corresponding ux so the intersection will be disjoint from all the ux size the same kind of argument. so h will be disjoint from g okay over so what we have proved now is compact hostile space is normal all right now little more Compact regular space itself is normal. Actually, first what we proved is compact regular, compact Hausdorff implies compact regular, which I haven't stated, but I have indicated already, right here. From here, if you if you see that I am using actually regularity here, because regularity is now built in from our proposition. Compact hostor already implied regularity. Okay, so I could have just stated here it's regular, there we have regular implies all. So this proof of this part here of this theorem gives you compact regular implies normal. Now why we make this first because you know that regularity does not imply Hausdorffness, even under compactness. Okay, therefore, the argument itself should be used. Okay, don't rely upon Hausdorffness directly whenever you have regular compact, it's also normal. Okay, proof is just exactly here. Yet another condition under which a space becomes normal, okay, is the following. Instead of compactness, we just put Lindelofness, which is weaker than compactness. Recall Lindelofness means every open cover has a countable subcover. Okay. That is enough. This is a bit of a surprise here because I cannot take intersection of countably many open sets and claim it countable. Yet, this here works. So, we have to sharpen our argument a little bit. How? Let us see. Start with two disjoint closed subsets of a regular space. Lindelof space is in the background, first of all. Okay. We will we'll, we'll use it. Using the regularity for each point A inside A, we get an open set UA such that 
a is contained inside u a contained inside u a bar contained inside the complement of b because to begin with a is contained inside the complement of b which is open and a is closed so this is another version of regularity likewise for each b inside b there exists open subset vb such that B belongs to VB contained inside VB closure contained inside AC. Here I am just reversing the two role of A and B. That's all. Now we use the lintel of property. We get a countable subcover UN and a countable subcover VN for A and B respectively. Okay, because A and B are closed subsets of a Lindelof space. Just like closed subspace of a compact space is compact, similarly closed subspace of Lindelof space is Lindelof. With this we have seen earlier, it is not difficult. Once I say this one, you can verify it easily. Okay. Now we do process which is quite common in the study of measure theory. Okay. There are a lot of uh, exchange of techniques from the study of measure theory as well as study of topology. I cannot pinpoint whether these things were first used in measure theory or the other way around. Okay, there are many such uh, uh, things. Okay, so what I do, I start taking P1 as say U1 minus v1 bar okay v1 is v1 is open subset v1 bar is a closed set if you subtract a closed set from an open set it's still open it's just like the de morgan law it is same thing as intersection with the complement here taking un minus something inductively i do this pn is the un part but now subtract k range 1 to n vk bar union all the sets up to k equal to 1 to n of the closure union of finitely many union of of uh, finitely many closed sets is closed so this pn is open okay for each n similarly on the other side qn is taken as vn minus k range from 1 to n u k bar okay now p n and v n q n are open covers for a and b respectively i have just observed that these are open why they cover a point x take a point x inside a it is in one of the u n's okay but i am subtracting something here no but these things are all disjoint when we should start with how do we have taken this one. B belongs to VB. VB bar is contained inside a complement of A. So when I subtract VB or VB bar, points of A are not disturbed. They are there. That's why. So these PNs will also cover. Take any X inside A. It will be one of the UNs. It will be in the corresponding PN. Similarly, B will uh, these QNs will cover B. Okay. Now take P as union of all these PNs and Q as union of all these QNs. Okay. Then P and Q are open subsets. They contain A and B respectively. All the circus Y you have done precisely to attain P intersection Q is empty set. Okay. So let us be convinced why this uh, intersection is empty. What is the meaning of this is not empty? Take a point here in both P and Q. Okay. This means X must be inside, you know, because intersection of unions is union of all these intersections p n intersection q m okay n and m could be will it must be in one of them okay for some n and m 
without loss of generality, we may assume n is smaller than m. Otherwise, we can interchange the row, no problem. Suppose n is smaller than m. Then q is, uh, sorry, x is inside qm implies that see, x is in qm here means that x cannot be in any of this uk bar carrying from 1 to m. Okay. So x cannot be inside pk. Okay. So for any one less than equal to k less than equal to m, contradicting x is inside pk because n is smaller than that. Because you are subtracting those parts. If something is here, fine. But if same thing is in the subtract this part also, then it will not be in QM. The fact that it is in QM, so it is not in any of these PKs. Because PKs are what? PK is UK minus something. Okay, they are smaller subsets than it. So if it's not in UK bar itself, it cannot be in PK. All right? So that's a contradiction. Okay. So, so this is the modification that we needed for countable. Beyond countability, even this technique will fail. Okay. So here is a remark. In part one, we have seen that regularity and normality do not imply each other. Seemingly, normality is stronger because here we are expecting every close sub disjoint, close subset to be separated. In the case of normality, it's a point and a close subset are separated. In the case of regularity, so <laughs> you know, on a first thing, you may think that uh, normality is stronger than regularity. Under some conditions, namely T1S, it is true. That also you have seen. So T4 implies T3 implies regularity. So T4 is T1 plus normal. Okay. But what I wanted to make this these things that we have we have seen earlier. Now, what is the what is the addition thing that I want to say? What I want to say is really this regularity and normality quite close. That is why whenever we are discussing one of them, we end up discussing the other one. They are so close. So this theorem, for example, does tell you that namely, uh, you know, regular first compact hostile space is what first we prove regularity and then we prove normality. So compact Hausdorff is normal. Once you prove normal, of course, uh, it is regular because it's already Hausdorff. But to prove normality, we went through regularity. Okay. So that is the point I wanted to make here. That's all. Okay. So we will stop here today. Next time, we will bring another new concept, namely local compact. Thank you.